So I'm planting my second batch of main crop onions today. The first batch went in a coal frame, so they were getting quite a lot of protection from the wind and the rain, um, uh, but not really from the cold. The coal frame, you know, that's any polythene top, doesn't really protect them from the cold. But that wind chill is really harsh on uh, little seedlings, and so coal frame's pretty good for that. My next batch of seedlings I'm putting uh, out just in a big raised bed and it's hyd hydration levels, water levels in that bed are really good although a lot of the other plots around us are quite flooded but we're quite high up so um, I'm pretty happy that they won't rot in there. I'm doing 50% sets, 50% um, uh, grown from seed and this is just an experiment that I'm running. I just got sent so many sets from seed companies to try out that I thought, well, might as well try them out and do a comparison. So most of that is going to be the red onions, although I've got some uh, yellow onions as well. Uh, but I'll be doing those in a subsequent batch. So we do lots of different batches uh, when we're planting out our main crop onions in different locations. And we do that basically as a kind of diversification strategy to make sure, or help, hopefully make sure, that we don't suffer from problems from the weather, problems from pests, and problems from disease. If you grow different varieties in different places and plant them at different times, the chances of your whole crop being wiped out by a problem is you know, very, very low. Um, and I also do water my onions with a nematode. It's called fruit and veg protection. I use it for the carrots. I use it for the uh, cabbage root fly. And so I use it for the carrot fly, the cabbage root fly, uh, and onion fly. And so it's pretty versatile. It also works for cutworms, and we have a lot of cutworm problems here for the lettuces and other salad crops. And actually cutworms can cut through the stem of a, of a baby brassica as well. So um, yeah, it's pretty useful nematode, although it's quite expensive, but if you grow a lot like we do, it, it doesn't really uh, factor into the expenses. And I do cover my early sowings, so early plantings of onions with uh, fleece. And I'll show you that as well. And again, I'm doing that not really for the warmth, I'm doing it because of the wind and it does kind of it is quite a fine fleece um, and so i think it also works potentially for the onion fly but i'm not 100 percent sure about that i wouldn't want to make any guarantees but it seems pretty fine to me and i can't see you yeah, know onion fly getting through it but who knows they can be pretty persistent so this is the bed i'm planting with my main crop onions today and it's got field beans in it right now, and these suffered really badly in the big freeze. And they've just started to grow again. I actually harvested them, all the good ones, yesterday. Um, I'm leaving the roots in the ground. I'm just snipping them off with my scissors. And if you snip them off, kind of like that, they won't regrow. Or at least I hope they won't. So even though those field beans were tiny, you can still see all these little ni nitrogen nodules on the stem. Now nitrogen is actually quite good for onions early on when they're focusing on green growth uh, then you want very slow release nitrogen for the rest of their lives so from about June onwards and so I think these will provide a nice slow release the roots that are left in but I've also put down some blood fish and bone and again that's a nice balanced fertilizer bit of nitrogen early on then that nitrogen will be depleted but I'm going to cover mulch this whole thing with mushroom compost as well so I'll put the mushroom compost on now 
and you can see hopefully that this is very fluffy and very strawy and this means it's not very well composted and actually I don't mind that at all at this time of year because I want this to be a really effective mulch to retain the water and I've already put some fertilizer underneath it so I'm quite happy to kind of be planting through this mulch and so I'll be going quite deep down with the planting holes um, and the onions will just sort of grow up through this now I've got some here just pour on there and this is composted so I got this earlier on and it's been about three months I think composting and you can see that there's no real straw left in this but weed seeds germinate better in this composted mushroom compost and they really don't germinate very well in this uncomposted or well, it is partly composted so for onions I'm thinking this will this kind of partially composted will be perfect as I said it'll act as a really good water retaining mulch it'll gradually rot down and provide nutrients and it will it's sterile it's sterilized when it comes out of the mushroom factory steam sterilized so there's no weed seeds in it and weed seeds will find it really hard to germinate so kind of that's a perfect mix I think for onions because they're being planted so intensively it's a real fiddle to uh, weed them and although it's possible to weed them by hand you don't want to be doing that too much so I've moved that little mesh cover over those brassicas keep the pigeons off so these are the onions I'm putting in so these are red baron roughly three seeds per module and these are Bedfordshire Champion and Elsa Craig some of these have got maybe too many onions in I think I put four in hoping for three to germinate but in some cases I've got three I've got four germinating but I've, what I've done is I've just changed the spacings a little bit so that there's a bit more spacing on this side of the bed than there is on that side of the bed so I'll put these um, ones where there's more seeds in inside with more space I think so these modules are maybe a little bit dry but basically my criteria for whether I'm ready to plant is is the module holding together well the uh, onions are quite generally quite happy uh, to go out whatever the weather conditions provided there's no kind of hard frosts in their short-term future and these are holding together really nicely but I don't want them at all pot bound so it's easy to convince yourself that you want the biggest sets but actually it's often the smaller sets that give you the biggest onions so don't be scared of putting in little little ones like this that fine seem to be fine um, and just have a look to see if there's any with mold on them like that one for example just reject those but other than that, than that, most of those look to be fine. And when you're putting them in, you do want to be careful not to damage the base. This is nice and fluffy, this compost. So I'm just pushing them in and I want them to be well into the soil. And so I'm just working them in like that. If I've got any big lumps of compost like this, I'll just sort of break that up as I'm going. But I don't want them planted in this mushroom compost. I want them down below into the soil there. And I'm putting them in, in this case, I think about 80 
per square meter because that's just how many onion sets I've got. So there's about 350 onions in there. Would have been nice to make it 365, but that's just about right. And I am just going to cover those over a little bit with compost. Uh, I just left the depressions there so that you could see them. And as I said, the sets are planted so that they're just, the tips are just showing. There we go. I'm not sure it makes much difference to cover them like this, but it just seems like the right thing to do. No doubt in a week's time they will just start to shoot which will be really nice to see now you can plant at slightly higher density than this you could have put about 400 onions rather than 350 in this bed that's just how this one happened to work out for me when i did this bed last week this one was about 100 onions per square meter this bed was the onion bed last year had this little frame on it which was used for the onions and then for the spinach over winter so I'm going to move that over I always build all of my frames the same way hammer in some fence pins details of these are linked in the ebook which you can find in the description and then just put a eye saver on to protect the fleece and then I always get old canes kind of starting to rot no use for beam frames anymore yeah, that's a super rigid frame the eye savers really make a difference not to your eyes but to the length of time that your fleece will last and now I've got to put the nets on so this is the net that I usually use over the onions but it's in use at the moment protecting these little pea shoots which are looking really nice and this is how I do a temporary net so I just use the coke cans on little bits of um, sawn up cane and this is fine just for a low net it's going to be on for a month or so since these onions are going to be in until August and then I'm going to have uh, spinach and spring onions and field beans and things in here after that I'll probably leave this net on pretty much all year round and so I want good hard wearing net and so I'm using Envirotect and here's the little blurb protects against weather insect pests and birds so that's really useful for onions unlike fleece can be used many times well I can testify that is true I've used this that piece that I've just shown you over the peas for three years I think still in great condition is much stronger than fleece yep certainly is allows more light through than fleece so that's a real benefit if you're leaving it on for a long time and protects down to minus three degrees C well the onions will appreciate that although they don't specifically need it but there's another big big advantage to it which I'll show you in a few minutes so what's that other benefit well first off you can see through it so you can actually see what is going on which is really nice but the biggest benefit like ordinary fleece which the water runs along this stuff the water goes exactly where you want it no pooling at all that's how I finish it. I just use these little spring clips. If you want details of those, look in the ebook chapter that's linked below. So, I hope you like this quick video. As I probably pointed out, but I just want to re emphasize these are not my only onions. So, this is about half, maybe even a third, certainly a, um, a half anyway, no more than a half of my main crop onions. So, I, can, I wouldn't say I can afford to take a risk on them. But we won't go hungry if this whole crop failed 
we Debbie and I would have enough, but family would suffer. Um, but it's just time to put them out now. You know, the, the size of them is right. Um, and I'm pretty confident they'll be fine. But, uh, you know, who knows what the weather can throw at us. I mean, we are not even in April yet. And I would normally plant mine out around the 10th of April. But I looked at the long range weather forecast and it doesn't look like anything bad's going to happen between now and the 10th of April. And since the plants are ready to go, why not? My name's Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel. And I'll see you soon.